AI, artificial intelligence, they're saying it's bringing to us the fourth industrial revolution. But how do we define it? What does it mean for us? And how is it exactly transforming our future? We'll talk about them right here in this program, upfront. Fourth Industrial Revolution has been one of the main pillars of the World Economic Forum Annual Meeting 2016. It is expected to be a new driving force in the near future, bringing a huge change to the world. During the forum, artificial intelligence, or AI, was raised as a major content of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. We are now facing a new era of artificial intelligence, that machines with artificial intelligence and human beings coexist. In the past, only human beings could drive a car, but now a car can drive itself. Robots can take orders in stores, clean houses, and even cook. A robot that can read people's emotions and interact with each other has also been invented. Artificial intelligence is based on big data which analyzes a large volume of data. It is the process of teaching computers to distinguish different things, following the information processing system of the human brain. IBM's Watson, a computer with artificial intelligence system, has already been widely used in various fields including finance, medicine and distribution. This supercomputer has especially played a bigger role in the medical field. Watson can diagnose patients and suggest a treatment by analyzing the gene information. It has already been used in a lot of hospitals around the world. There are many other industries that have paid attention to the developed technology of artificial intelligence. Global IT companies like Google and Facebook have accelerated the process of many artificial intelligence projects. They have actively invested in developing artificial intelligence technologies in order to take a leading role in future industries. We are now on the threshold of the era of artificial intelligence. Upfront discusses the current state of artificial intelligence technology and proper measures needed to better prepare for the future. Okay, for today's program, we have uh, to start with our guest on my left, Seo Yirong, Professor of Electronic Engineering at Hanyang University. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us. And Professor mm. Kim Sun, the Director of Bioinformatics Institute at the Seoul National University. Thank, Thank you, you for the invitation. All right. And Dr. Jang Byung Tak, Director of the Institute for Cognitive Science at Seoul National University. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is a very fascinating subject indeed. And, and looking back, as long as 25 years in my recollection, uh, I've been interested in this question. I mean, you know, sorry to start the program with Hollywood uh, culture here, but when, when the movie Terminator came out mm -hmm. and also the movie uh, Matrix came out, mm -hmm. you know, I, I continuously thought about this question of the boundary between human beings and, and uh, the, uh, AI, right. Mm -hmm. so, but the thing is, always it was never clear to me how we define AI, artificial <coughs> intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. The computer's origin itself is based on the autonomous decision based on algorithm, the way I see it, right? A or B, a computer chooses it according to the given program. But what are we talking about? Are we talking about that or are we only talking about the, the self-conscious of a machine that recognizes itself? How do we define it, Dr. Zhang? So, um, Artificial intelligence mm -hmm. uh, tries to develop machines artificially. I mean, the, the human intelligence mm -hmm. uh, artificially. Okay. So in computers. So uh, it basically tries to develop machines that mm -hmm. think and mm -hmm. act like humans. Uh, the result might be a software mm -hmm. as well as a hardware. Mm. But it usually it's a software and algorithms. So, Professor Kimson, I still have that question. Are we talking about artificial intelligence starting off from the, uh, the, the start of computers themselves uh, from the beginning? Or what is how is artificial intelligence new now? I think uh, 
You know, the, the one of the inventors of a computer mm -hmm. is Alan Turing, mm -hmm. has a famous Alan Turing test. Right, you know, right. The, so I think I would say that it's in the beginning of the computer, and mm -hmm. then I think we had an interest in the artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And then in my opinion, is artificial intelligence is something we learn from many examples, not small number, and then we generalize mm -hmm. the, our experience. I think that's artificial intelligence in okay. my opinion. Uh, as we can note here, uh, you know, notice here our guests' uh, perspective and definition of artificial intelligence seem to differ slightly depending on whom you're asking. So we have to ask <laughs> <you>. <laughs> uh, Professor So, how do you define artificial intelligence? Uh, when you think uh, the uh, intelligence mm -hmm. uh, from the viewpoint of the human, mm -hmm. then we think uh, that the uh, uh, human level of intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, in that sense, I think that the Professor Kim and <coughs> Professor Chang, their um, uh, definition of AI mm -hmm. uh, might be uh, correct. But uh, I think that uh, when we think about the, uh, the animals, uh, oh. whose uh, intelligence is not the uh, uh, mm. same as mm. the human, then we might uh, think the definition of AI in some different ways. Mm. So I think that uh, the living creatures, mm. including humans, right. um, whatever it is, they have to um, recognize mm. uh, something in, the, in their environment, and uh, they have to predict what will happen in the environment, mm -hmm. and then they have to decide what to do ah. for survival. So autonomously they read the environment and yes. make the decision? Yes. I see. Yes. Okay, okay. That's uh, clear. So mm -hmm. uh, even a dog, cat, or some kind of rat, uh, they mm -hmm. uh, sense the environment and they recognize the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, they um, predict what will happen in the environment, mm -hmm. and they have to do yeah, mm. or what to do mm. uh, uh, for, for getting food or to avoid uh, some kind of very um, mm. uh, danger. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So okay. It, the AI is the software mm. to okay. implement such kind of uh, uh, survival. Mm. So, yeah. I think that's, that's uh, very clear, one of the clearest uh, definitions of, of AI. But these days, a general public, they seem to get confused between, because of perhaps, let, uh, sorry for bringing the movie back here, but you know, Terminator, the, yeah. the robots. Uh, so general public often ask a question, you know, how is artificial intelligence different from robots? Uh, <coughs> and well, I'm talking about robot here, but then again, there is, seems to be an AI that seems to be deep inside the machine, right? Uh, what we see, what we saw in a movie like Her, where you really don't get to touch the yeah, identity. Mm -hmm. So how do we separate the concept of robotics and artificial intelligence? Right, uh, so uh, as, as humans mm -hmm. also has a body as well as a mind. Mm -hmm. so, um, so robot has a shape, so it, it, uh, if we talk about the robots, we emphasize the body. Mm. A while, we, if we talk about AI, it's mm -hmm. more on the side of a mind, mm -hmm. so intelligence. So, but uh, recent uh, progress and development emphasizes the embodiment, mm -hmm. embody the mind. Mm -hmm. So basically, the ultimate goal of AI might be the intelligent robots. So I it's see. a combined. Okay. Uh, AI, mm -hmm. intel intelligence, and uh, robot. That's why they're right. saying uh, recent days the progress is making the boundary between the digital and physical and the biological exactly. world yeah. blurry. They are integrated right, and the, right. the, the boundary is get, getting blurred. So yeah. as we go further forward, the robotics will become even more in important part of AI. Right. On okay. the other hand, without intelligence, uh, we really don't talk about much mm. about the robots. So, right. So Robots right. are by definition mm -hmm. right. intelligent and emotional. Right. Yeah. Professor Kim Sun, uh, tell us a little bit about the more fundamental uh, technological basis for AI. I mean, we hear all these different words like deep learning, machine learning, all these things. <coughs> uh, what are the foundations of the progress of AI? I think uh, the progress of the AI technology mm -hmm. has been developed for several decades, not years. Right, right. So, for example, 
deep learning, which is really a hot topic these days. What is, is deep learning? Mm -hmm. Deep learning mm -hmm. is, uh, so let me just uh, continue on this. Mm -hmm. So deep learning is evolved from the artificial neural network, okay. which is started for decades. Mm -hmm. And then and we also has uh, great progress in optimization technology, in optimizing parameter for the machines. Okay. And so you're getting very uh, <laughs> yeah, professional. So, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I, so my point is that uh -huh. uh, you know the the current technology we are seeing is mm -hmm. actually as a result of the research many decades. Actually, not many, but in several decades, not years. Mm. So. It's kind of technological achievement over the years. Mm. Then how is uh, like a big data related to artificial intelligence? Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think that the uh, uh, deep learning is uh, one of the way to learn something from the big data. Mm -hmm. uh, um, actually, uh, mm. in the beginning of AI, right. The many uh, scientists try to develop some software mm -hmm. to uh, recognize uh, some uh, uh, animals or objects right. uh, in the nature environment, but mm -hmm. they failed uh, because they try to uh, recognize the something in the environment mm -hmm. by means of uh, some uh, predefined rules. Mm. So the scientist, the so human, mm. has to set up the rules, okay? But uh, it fails because we cannot uh, pr predict what will happen in the environment. Right, so we cannot right. assemble any, uh, every possible rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. But uh, once we collect uh, uh, big data, right. uh, uh, we, we, we have never imagined. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the, the computer software. Uh, becomes to understand mm -hmm. uh, what, ins what, what is inside in the environment. Right. Okay. So right. I think that they uh, not uh -huh. just to, uh, not just to simply recognition, but mm -hmm. just to, but uh, understanding mm -hmm. the environment. Okay. That's the reason why the big data and mm -hmm. the deep learning uh, is the uh, very mm -hmm. uh, spotlighted in these days. Yeah. Fascinating. The thing is, from there, I think we need uh, further discussion about deep learning and big data. Any more to add here? I think the, the AI or machine learning is we are learning from examples. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. big data is very important in that context because we need really many examples. So mm -hmm. big data means really many examples mm -hmm. available right now. Mm -hmm. So AI can be successful right now. Ah, interesting. So uh, deep learning is a machine learning technology. Mm -hmm. So machine learning, again, is an algorithm uh, that uh, processes the data right. and uh, generates a kind of uh, another algorithm or program. Mm. It's a kind of automatic programming. Mm. So from the data, the, the machine can generate the program automatically. Right. right. So that's, that's, that's why machine learning is so interesting and uh, revolutionary. So, so machine has to, uh, machines have to learn these things. They have automatically. To have a, they have to have a data, right? right. Because uh, what I thought was f f quite fascinating was that, uh, you know, scientists, I was told, first developed this computer to play chess, for instance. And, yep. would, wow, and the computers did such a great job. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, recognizing faces, uh, recognizing mother, father, those are easy things for babies. Right. And they're right. not exactly doing that based on their data, right? Uh, we were born with that capability. Mm -hmm. And computers can seem to, at least uh, you know, in the past, uh -huh. they had a lot of difficulty, right? So is there a fundamental difference between machine cognition and the human cognition here? Are we saying that for mo machine cognition, you really need the data? Is that, is that Right, that's mm -hmm. why uh, the AI people are also studying uh, neuroscience and uh -huh. brain science and cognitive science. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we can learn from human brain and mind. Mm -hmm. So the principles of uh, computation, wow. which can be used for developing machines. So are you saying so the, the, the machine could actually move away from their past machine-like uh, paradigm and getting closer to human paradigm? Th is that what they're trying to do? In some sense, it's right. Yeah, oh, in okay. some sense. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. In the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, when the, the scientists tried to develop the a chess program right. to beat the chess champion, right. at the time, they used the yeah, logics. So they need to develop the uh, abundance of the rules to right. uh, in the chess program. Right. Right. Uh, but humans uh, do not uh, have such kind of abundant rules 
uh, we using some kind of intuition, mm -hmm. that might be the pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we uh, have the, so much experiences about the uh, chess games, right. then we are uh, uh, very familiar with the patterns. Mm -hmm. So what pattern is very similar to the patterns that I have experienced? Mm -hmm. That's the reason why the humans can uh, 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 do chess better than the um, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, computer. Computers, right, so, right. La last two week, mm -hmm. I uh, learned that they, uh, the Deep Mind mm -hmm. is a branch company of the Google. Right. They developed. Uh, um, oh. uh, they they de de developed uh, AlphaGo. Mm -hmm. So right. they, yeah, AlphaGo program beat the uh, uh, European Go champions. Oh, okay. It's a pro, pro champions. Uh -huh. Okay, it is the uh, first time for the uh, computer Go program to mm. beat the human, pro <laughs> professional human. Right. Interesting. Right. Yes. I remember right. the time when, you know, for a long time, computer could not exactly beat the human uh, Western chess champion, and then finally computer beat it, and then, right. uh, you know, computer won, and then now even Go field, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. they're going in. Does that mean, I have this fundamental question, one day will we have machines that recognize themselves? I'm talking about self-consciousness. I mean, you have, Professor, so you have said, you know, the, the artificial intelligence is something that recognizes the environment and come up with uh, decisions. But will we see yeah. soon machine recognizing themselves, think about themselves, uh, who am I, asking the question yeah. and stuff? What do you see? Hmm. Maybe it's to you. Is it possible? Uh, that's actually a tough question. Uh -huh. um, so I, uh, people, uh, some people say that might be possible mm -hmm. sometime, mm -hmm. but uh, some philosophers are against that, so mm. uh, we are still uh, discussing about but, that. But it looks like so, you're talking about ethics here, but right. uh, technology mm -hmm. will one day, I mean, just like the, the genetics, right? Human cloning, they're saying it should be banned, but we know scientists all around the world are working on uh, you know, reproducing, replicating human beings these days, mm -hmm. maybe in secret, some of them, and some of them openly. Mm -hmm. So we do have scientists who are trying to create these machines that recognize well, themselves, I think right? it's a different uh, subject because I'm mm -hmm. working in medical field yes. and, um, you know, copying the human or copying the dog mm -hmm. is actually based on the, we are copying the genetic information. We didn't mm -hmm. create the genetic information. We just copy the genetic information and then make it work. So mm -hmm. you're kind of duplicating. However, the topic, you know, you asked the question is that it's not something the, you know, machine can think of who am I, something mm -hmm. like that. I don't mm -hmm. think we are not reaching that level. Yet. Not yet? Yeah, not yet. And then uh, let's talk about the reality just a bit here. Uh, where, how do we define the start of the development of artificial intelligence? I think we dealt, upon, dealt with it slightly at the beginning here, but uh, where do we see the beginning of this human endeavor to develop artificial intelligence? History. Right, the, the word artificial intelligence mm -hmm. was uh, coined in 1956 at a, at a small conference. Dartmouth. Uh, Dartmouth mm -hmm. conference. Um, okay. So from 1950s, mm -hmm. that's uh, the time of after World War II. Mm -hmm. And um, the long, compu long computer- Long time ago. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, so my, I guess history. my suspicion was right that possibly beginning of computer itself has to do with our thinking about artificial intelligence. Exactly. Really, After yeah. mm. computers were, were invented, mm -hmm. people thought of that um, probably we can make some machines that are intelligent. Mm -hmm. So the computers that can simulate the human intelligence. Right. That's the start of the artificial intelligence, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I see. And but then, uh, then uh, what about, we are jumping the history here, <coughs> and what about Korea here? I mean, you know, a lot of people are, have been saying for a decade or two, Korea is very strong in IT industry. Yeah. And does that mean we're uh, doing pretty well here? Do we see a big gap between us and then pioneering artificial intelligence? Uh, Where do we stand? Okay, um, uh, as far as Korea is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, academically, mm -hmm. uh, we are grouped in the several community. It's a brain engineering community. Brain. Brain. Oh, okay and uh, robotics uh, community, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and cognitive science community, and the computer uh, science community. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I, I agree that they, uh, the ICT technologies right. is the, a very key technology in Korea. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody said that Korea is very strong in the ICT. But I think that the ICT is a supporting technology to develop the AI. Why is that? What, yeah. what, are, what are more important ones than if ICT? More important so? is that they, uh, mm -hmm. we have to um, understand mm -hmm. uh, how the human understand the, uh, everything I in see. daily life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even in the behavior or motion. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but I think that uh, uh, we Korean mm -hmm. uh, did not investigate the, uh, some basic uh, science or basic uh, technologies mm -hmm. to investigate uh, what happened in the human mm -hmm. brain and the human body. Or uh, yeah. so mm, without that kind of basic knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, we cannot uh, achieve <coughs> a great uh, a big impact mm -hmm. of the AI software, whatever hardware. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Th right. that's a fascinating point right there. But yeah, I also like to support uh, Professor So's opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so in Korea, actually, the AI, the AI belongs to uh, basic research. Actually, machine learning okay. was a mathematical studies okay. of uh, mm -hmm. uh, learning algorithms. So far, mm -hmm. maybe up until five years ago in Korea. Mm -hmm. So, but in Korea, uh, didn't much invest uh, in basic research, especially in computer science, software, or in engineering field. Mm. Engin engineering is a too much applied. I see. But the AI was in the middle. Mm. It's a basic science to be transferred to the technology and the industry. Right, right. Now is the time the mm -hmm. AI uh, went to the industry. So in some way, in Korea has a strong um, strength in mm. many ICT areas. All right. Uh, from the AI point of view, maybe we are missing a lot of uh, basic research so really? far. But okay. uh, mm. in applied, Mm -hmm. research like a deep learning res recently. Mm -hmm. The big uh, global companies in Korea, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are, have started to work on that mm -hmm. and uh, maybe commercialize that too. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. that's a strength, yeah. but uh, okay. we miss a, a little bit. Yeah. Very it, clear picture emerging here. Yeah, let, yes. let me add something. <laughs> Please. On, on mm -hmm. It's a, well, let, let us think about the deep learning again, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But deep, deep learning requires big data, but human, can learn something very essential in the uh, uh, in, 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 in some happenings mm -hmm. uh, by using small data. Right. Okay. Uh, the difference we, between the baby and computer I talked yes, about. Right? Yes. Right. Exactly. Small data. So, right. uh, so. and the 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 uh, information processing way of a team network mm -hmm. is the. Uh, it's the one-way processing, okay? Right. But the in human, mm -hmm. it's the bi-directional uh, mm -hmm. information processing I in the see, brain. I see. I see. So so much different mm -hmm. between the um, deep learning mm -hmm. and the human uh, information processing, mm -hmm. brain processing. I see. That means that, that we need to know more about the uh, brain inf ah. information processing. Mm -hmm. Okay. That kind of understanding of the human brain mm -hmm. signal processing mm -hmm. will. Uh, let have the opportunity to develop uh, some more impact uh, software like uh, mm -hmm. deep learning. So there okay. is a gap between how computer works these days on one hand and how brain works. These uh, brain has been <coughs> brains have been working. So we are continuously uh, closing the gap here. I think that's yeah. my understanding right. here. Right. Okay. Well, as our viewers would know, there has been a recent gathering in January in Swiss Davos and at the World Economic Forum. They were talking about the, the current progress and where we stand in terms of technological progress uh, in the area of uh, inter artificial intelligence. So let's take a look at this one and then uh, we'll come back to our discussion. The other big thing uh, which has been going on behind the scenes, but you don't see it in front of the cameras so much, is the gradual work to remove the boring parts of white collar work. This is a very hot topic. So for example, in the legal world, uh, there's uh, many startups now taking away the boring parts of understanding millions of legal documents to prepare for a case by actually having computers read and understand what's in the document. Mm -hmm. And over and over again, you see that in the business plan and in the academic world is how we're going to get rid of the boring parts of white collar work is not going to kill it, but it's going to get rid of the uh, tedious components of it. 
progress on understanding language uh, in the legal area uh, has been very important. If uh, we extend that, um, and the interesting thing about machines is if they can read one document, they can read another one and another one, and pretty soon they've read everything that the human race has ever written. Um, so they might not be able to read it better than a human, but they can read a heck of a lot more than human beings can. Uh, so a search engine, uh, such as Baidu or Google, uh, are incredibly good at processing all those documents and indexing them, uh, and sometimes returning useful ones when we put in a query. But they understand little or nothing about the content of the document. So they can't really answer your question, and they may be giving you back a document that contains the wrong answer to your question. Um, whereas if the systems have really understood everything uh, that the documents contain, at least in a factual sense, uh, then they can be far more useful. And if the search engine industry is worth a trillion dollars roughly right now, uh, this new level of technology could be worth 10 trillion mm -hmm. uh, because it'll have so many more applications and be so, mu so much more useful to so many more people. And from here, we'll be talking about how the AI, artificial intelligence, is changing our daily lives here. So uh, for that, I'm sure we have a lot to say. Uh, how should we start? Uh, Dr. Zhang, uh, should we start with the concept home robot? Or mm -hmm. is that Korean term? Or is it globally, do we call it home robot or home robotics? Uh, uh, where, where do we stand? I think there's a great interest here in Korea. Uh, right. It, people use home robots, actually, but home robots, uh, the okay. better word for our research might be personal service robots. Okay, personal so service robots. robots. Okay. Serving at home mm -hmm. uh, for people, mm -hmm. like uh, children or elderly people. Mm. So, um, yeah, basically we try to build a small um, uh, mobile robot working at home mm. uh, to care for children mm. uh, when uh, mom is working. Right. So mom can't do, cannot care for the children. Mm. So uh, the robot can help uh, schedule the children and maybe play with them. And uh, by playing with them, actually the robot can um, uh, teach a, a little bit English too. We oh have been actually gosh. building a It's not a human ro teaching robots, but te robots <coughs> teaching humans? In some way, indirectly. Wow. So yeah, indirectly. Actually, we have been uh, uh, developing a Bororo robot. Mm -hmm. The robot uh, watches the, the Bororo right. cartoon videos. Right, right. cartoon character. Right, right. right. exactly. Uh -huh. So one of the important uh, uh, technology area in AI is the knowledge acquisition. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one of the bottleneck. Okay. To be intelligent, mm -hmm. machines should have a lot of knowledge. Oh, not the big data thing, isn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the machine learning can automate mm -hmm. the uh, knowledge acquisition process from raw data. That's so, the so are you saying the machine itself decides to what to learn, <laughs> what to acquire? This is active learning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then autonomously that's being done. Yeah. The, the machine uh, decides it by itself. We are not so far means. yet, but okay. uh, we are going in that direction. Okay. So robots can um, decide uh, autonomously. But to me it's scary because when, I mean, you know, the, the human beings teaching machine what to do is fine. But when human beings learn from machine, <laughs> does that mean we are going to become like machine here? Once again, I think this is a philosophical question, but you are saying those days are coming. Uh, right. So, uh, educationally, it might not be uh, correct. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, but uh, right, the education mm -hmm. can have uh, different forms. Right. So by just uh, playing with the children, mm -hmm. uh, and the robot gives the children the opportunity to speak in, in English. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one aspect of education too. So the, basically the children learn by themselves, but the robot helps them. In that sense, I guess online learning that's taking place already right. is yeah. kind of thing. So we, but we the don't robots have are to interact be, right. we, interacting we be, with the children. So, right. uh, we shouldn't be that much of yeah. scared, I guess. Uh, but <laughs> oh, let's talk about those education field and uh, medicine and game industry and so on. Uh, in Korea and around the world, what are some of the, you know, going beyond, just let's forget about, about robots for now, but mm -hmm. the, the daily life that we are uh, managing here. Uh, how is artificial intelligence being, being used and, and how is it being developed in different areas here? Um, in med 
you said medical field, and mm. then I think uh, we now making great progress. Um, you know, as many people know that IBM Watson mm -hmm. is actually op uh, applied for cancer. So our IBM Watson oncology is actually commercial product. Oh, I see. Even it's sold in Korea right okay. now. And, uh, so is it diagnostic uh, software? Yeah, basically it's like a human. It, I, I, we don't have to be scared, but I mm. think what happened is that Watson actually attended the medical school. And the great, machine attended yes, the medical school. Yes, and, and then by the, using the same textbook as the, you know, the medical student does, mm -hmm. and then graduated from the medical school. Oh. And then Watson did the intern, mm -hmm. and then he, uh, Watson finished Let the intern. Let me ask you this, is, is Watson a robot or is Watson, Watson it, a uh, computer? It's a computer software. Computer software. Wow, actually, yeah. kind okay. of super computer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then now is Watson is making decisions about how we you know, treat the patient. And then oh. this is already commercialized. And then, okay. you know, the, so, however, I think mm -hmm. there is a, we don't really have to scale about this one instead. Mm. Uh, one, one of the investors actually pointed out that mm. the development of that Watson oncology will mm. be really good for people because, you know, not that many people will get getting the very high quality cancer services, mm -hmm. cancer treatment services. Mm -hmm. So, especially in developing countries, right. they don't have really good doctors. I see. So, if you import the Watson Oncology program mm -hmm. there, especially mm -hmm. that person specifically mentioned the India, then mm -hmm. you know the the Indian people can benefit right. a lot from the how we treat cancer, something like that. Actually, so. I can see that in general practice of medicine, right? General <coughs> uh, practice, a uh, doctor, that uh, uh, you know, the, the machine can deal with the patient by asking right questions, yes and no, and then come up with diagnosis. And oncology too, right? Uh, it's a basically big data. A uh, knowledgeable oncologist is someone who has lots of knowledge and then quickly learn new findings mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. put together those kind of knowledge and offer proper diagnostics. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what machine can do right. well. Yeah, that's okay. what you're saying, yeah. right? right? So one, mm -hmm. one of very simple mm -hmm. AI examples in daily life mm -hmm. will be a cleaning robot. Okay. 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 It's a okay. cleaning robot. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, cleaning robot uh, uh, has a capacity to localize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He knows where he is. So I think where to recent. clean, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, very uh, uh, recently, mm -hmm. uh, there are some reports that mm -hmm. a uh, delivery robot. Mm -hmm is now being um, leveraged in hotels mm -hmm. and uh, hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the factory, uh, we can take a look at the uh, unmanned mm -hmm. beakers mm -hmm. to transport uh, some products right. uh, yeah, everywhere inside the factory. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a very simple example. And that area. also yeah. relates to the, the fascinating uh, technology drones too, right? Drones right. Uh, right. can be connected with the big data uh, and then they can but but in <laughs> case of the drones, the drones is uh, <laughs> tele-manipulated. Uh -huh. Since you're human, talking human about mobility. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe right. an another good example of right. everyday AI is mm -hmm. the Siri, Apple Siri. Yes, it's right. It's a virtual personal assistant. Uh -huh. It's a software right. that helps you in, at, in your smartphone. Mm -hmm. the, you, it can automatically send a message by talking right. to them. Right. Yeah. So Getting that's it. another kind of big data, right? The, the software right. has a lot right. of different experience, so it can mm. recognize our speech. So, but I'm right. interested in what Professor Saul has uh, mentioned, connecting the, the mobility together with the intelligence here. So, and I want to bring it back to <coughs> the discussion of medicine. Okay, oncology, <coughs> the, this computer that has lots of information can be a good doctor, makes perfect sense. But in medicine, <coughs> They also use kind of like a motion and mechanics. Uh, they, they say these days uh, surgery is increasingly mm -hmm. being done by uh, machine and, but yeah. does it have area for intelligence? Yeah, um, Artificial intelligence? Uh, as far as surgery is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, the AI may mm, do some recommendations. Mm -hmm. So what uh, will be uh -huh, okay. good place to mm -hmm. uh, uh, surge? Mm -hmm. it, uh, in, in, in my opinion, that they, uh, uh, in the current medical <coughs> robots mm -hmm. uh, are now being telemanipulated. So the good, mm. yeah, good uh, surgeon, mm -hmm. so good medical doctors operate the robot. It's more okay. about mechanics rather than intelligence it's, yet. 
yeah, so far. No, okay, uh, okay. So okay. not intelligent. Right. It's, uh, it's but later on, maybe the robots can read the data and, and <clears throat> recognize what's happening on the or in the operating room, and they can offer suggestions. Maybe right. in Surgery. very emergent cases, mm -hmm. in the battlefield, right? Is that there is no doctors? Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, we uh, leave the uh, soldiers, right. Uh, a little uh, 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 one hour, two hour, right? Then uh, we expect that the soldier will be die, mm. <coughs> will be dead. Then mm. uh, we have to ask the machines to right. operate instead mm -hmm. of the human doctors. Mm. But uh, in ordinary uh, days, mm -hmm. then I think that the, uh, the machines will not replace the human. Uh, in that uh, area, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I agree with you, and mm -hmm. then I think. Uh, Important point is that you know the robots, the AI technology will help you know the doctors by relieving those more like a tedious jobs, mm. and then so doctors can focus, uh, have more time to focus on important decisions. Right. I think we have prepared a uh, video about uh, in our background about the Japanese innovation. It's SoftBank's uh -huh. uh, robot called Pepper, and supposedly this recognizes our uh, human human in, uh, emotion and uh, recognizing human emotion seems to be fast becoming important uh, field in artificial intelligence. I mean, I know by that, yeah. but through another Hollywood movie, Her, for instance, right? right? Yeah. Uh, how do we describe the progress on human emotion recognition in, in AI? Uh, okay, uh, as far as emotion uh, uh, is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, the robot scientists would like to build up some software to recognize and express the emotions mm -hmm. uh, because the emotion is very essential uh, to interact with the human. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, the if uh, um, uh, humans mm -hmm. consider the robot uh, is really partner, uh, then uh, we need to have the uh, some communication way. Uh, except the uh, speech or gestures, mm -hmm. the third uh, way of the communication will be the uh, emotion, sense mm -hmm. of emotion. Mm -hmm. But I think that they, uh, technically, yeah. uh, the emotion sensing and the emotion expression may be very, very a uh, hard problem. Sure, sure, of course. Now, yeah. oh, so let's get scientific a little bit here, technical here. How do, we, how do machines recognize human uh, emotion? Is it all visual? Do they also process audio inputs, uh, our voice? How do they it's, recognize our yeah, emotions? It's a multimodal. So uh, currently the technology has been uh, uh, updated mm -hmm. to uh, sense or detect the emotions by means of the speech as well as face recognitions mm -hmm. and gestures. Mm -hmm. But the recognition accuracy mm -hmm. is not high. Okay. That is the right. problem. Right. So. Uh, if the don't they uh, have the, to do, don't uh, the machines have to recognize our language content of the language to recognize our sure emotion? sure sure I how think does, the uh, Watson right. Watson is the uh, I think that the best uh, um, <clears throat> speech interaction software mm -hmm. uh, if uh, that software is uh, popular mm -hmm. and then that that software can be uh, import, uh, ported in the uh, uh, implemented in the robots, mm -hmm. then robot can have the, uh, be able to interact with the human mm -hmm. uh, because they, they, uh, we need to big data right, right. to detect the uh, emotion mm -hmm. as well as uh, the other um, uh, 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 things. Big data. We have to ask, uh, I think, Professor Kim Sun about it. He's, he's in charge of bioinformatics here. Uh, let's say we we'll continue to talk about here, talk uh, the, the computer recognizing my emotion, for instance, right? In, a, in the middle of my conversation with the computer, all of a sudden I talk about my ailing mother. Can then Watson, based on big data, mm. recognize that without showing my emotions on the face, without changing my tones, uh, mm -hmm. can it recognize that I have this concern in my mind by just seeing the content of what I'm saying? I would say I think uh, it's uh, still pretty much uh, to recognize <laughs> your, you know, the emotion mm -hmm. by the mm -hmm. conversation. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. However, I think the as Professor Saw mentioned that mm -hmm. the our our means that computer way of uh, recognizing emotion is mm -hmm. uh, depends on the how we define the 
emotion computation as because it's a computer is doing <laughs> and then <laughs> right. we need to define emotion computation and everything oh. on computer is how we define numeric computer. yes right otherwise uh, we cannot compute so but as of now mm. all the progress i think in my opinion is that we have so many cases which is big data right so because of so many cases mm -hmm. and then you know the, if you have uh, numerous cases mm -hmm. probably you can sort out that okay in this case, a dead emotion. In this, in this case, wow. dead emotion, something mm. like that. Mm. But I don't think we are reaching at the level of uh, you know understanding human emotion. Okay, that, that's the reason why mm -hmm. we need the big data. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Good time to take a look at what they were talking about in Swiss Davos recently at the World Economic Forum about actual application of uh, artificial intelligence that could actually t tell us overall future direction of uh, direction here. So let's let's take a look at it. Uh, for Baidu, in fact, it's uh, essentially embedded in every uh, product, the service of what we offer. You know, voice recognition, uh, text-to-speech, machine translation, a search engine, you know, uh, advertising platform, and also autonomous driving. Uh, and you know, we have, a, a, in fact, a platform which will open to all the teams within Baidu and uh, make that available, in fact, to all the researchers uh, in the world, and, and we just complete our first uh, in the road test in Beijing from our office, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that actually includes uh, the, the locals and the highways, uh, the beltways, uh, uh, and you know without any human intervention, um, and you know was able to drive uh, up to 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, was able to do all the you know kind of sophisticated uh, uh, things that people would normally do. Um, but however, you know, it, it, it take, you know, take years to become uh, commercialized, I completely agree. It's not only the uh, uh, computer you know, vision, you have to detect objects, uh, uh, you have to you know, know where the people are, uh, but also you know, there's uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, events that, that's needed. Uh, you need a, a very different set of mapping, a high precision mapping. You need a more accurate positioning. Uh, so the uh, car we have actually has a, a radar scanner uh, that does all the multi-sensor real-time fusion, can you know, put a position uh, accuracy to up to uh, you know, a few centimeters, uh, So which really requires a, a lot of investment and infrastructure. So one, <clears throat> one aspect of that is we're starting to see these technologies uh, move out of the data center and out into the world. Uh, a, an automatic or autonomous vehicle is an example. It really is the case now that I, you know, I have friends at the office that have, that have these uh, new vehicles that you can now purchase, not prototypes, go down the road, take your hands off the wheel. That's remarkable. And the, the, uh, the advance there is allowing us to put that kind of capability into embedded devices, vehicles, phones, tablets, but also all kinds of internet of things that may some have a connection to a large data center and can benefit greatly from that, but some do not and can still take advantage of these techniques in a very local fashion. So it's the very widespread nature that's, that we're very excited about. Okay, having seen this video, I think we're going to devote the rest of our time here to the overall social impact of this, uh, what seems to be exciting, at the same time for some people, scary technology. So let's talk about that. Uh, panel members, uh, I have to share with you my own experience. Recently, I walked into one of the most globally famous kind of a franchise hamburger store. You know, it's a common name that we all know all around mm -hmm. the country and all around the world. And I found this kiosk that stands between the entrance and the, the, the desk, right, where you used to order hamburgers to human beings. Mm -hmm. This kiosk was right there to interrupt us and kind of trying to invite the people to interact with them rather than the human beings. Uh, mm -hmm. And that angered me because this hamburger mm -hmm. franchise restaurant, in my mind, stands for a business that hires people who are basically, who do not have as much knowledge, training, and kind of like a lower side of the social strata, kind of giving them source of income and all that. And if the machines take away their jobs, mm -hmm. I don't know, emotionally I was, mm -hmm. I was getting really uh, uncomfortable about it overall. Right. The jobs, I mean, when we park our cars, right, it used to be people would take your ticket, <coughs> uh, you get mm -hmm. the ticket and then return your ticket to the person. But these days they recognize your the plate 
and then there's mm -hmm. no longer any human being in the, in the garage. Mm -hmm. Is there any hope for this technology to create new jobs? Or are they all killing our jobs? This is a common question, but a lot of people are very much interested. So mm -hmm. scientists will have to answer the question. I, I think uh, you know, for <laughs> one of the I thought about that. You mm -hmm. know, then one of the good examples is the third industrial revolution. Uh, for example, I think a good example is the automobile industry. Right. Uh, long time ago, Ford company initiated you know, automation of the, uh, the you know the car manufacturing right. system. Yeah. Right. And maybe at that time, many people thought about that, okay, the machines will take over my job, something like that. I remember that, right. Uh, look at today. Mm -hmm. you know, the, we have a much, much bigger automobile you know, industry market mm -hmm. size. And mm -hmm. that actually, there are many more people is working in the <coughs> automobile industry. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, at some areas, uh, technology will expand the market, mm -hmm. and then expensive things getting cheaper and more accessible. Okay. So many people can benefit from it, the market mm -hmm. grows, and then there are more jobs, something like that. So I don't think it's one side that you know, the machines will take over my jobs. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, the argument that I've been hearing from my economist's friend, usually. Uh, referring back to that our past history, mm -hmm. is it really the same? Are we all sharing that uh, optimistic view here? Are we really sure that new technology will create new jobs? Uh, Dr. Zhang, what do you see? Uh, yeah, the, there are two aspects. Uh -huh. um, so, um, um, of, of course, we have to worry about uh, loss of jobs, mm -hmm. uh, which can be done or automated by the machines right. and AI. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, at, in terms of AI, at, mm -hmm. the, at this stage, I think uh, we still need uh, more jobs for developing AI. Scientists. Like, mm -hmm. Scientists. Engineers. Yes. Like, uh, Good for us. <coughs> <Okay>. Professor Sen. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're future students. <laughs> exactly. You can expand your schools, exactly. your yeah. departments. So uh, <laughs> the policy is uh, very important. Okay. So the, the educational policy and ah, should uh, consider that and uh, maybe they uh, create uh, new areas mm -hmm. like uh, sensing human uh, emotion or something like that. That's right. a new technology we need. Then, uh, then that yeah. begs me a question here because uh, I'm, you know, I'm teaching undergrad students and, and now it so mm -hmm. looks like you're telling me to go into computer science, uh, cognitive science and all yeah. that. And I'm thinking maybe I should discourage my students going into the area of medicine and, mm -hmm. and legal practice. It looks like you know, general yeah, practice right. and even oncology, they'll looks like they'll need fewer doctors and uh, divorce lawyers you will no longer uh, need it because all you have to do is just punch in a few hit a few <laughs> buttons on the computer uh, is that what's happening are we losing I mean they're saying even journalists we don't we may not need as many of them because computers Robot are channel. writing the news reports right so so should, we, should I tell my students to focus on computer <laughs> science no no um, I mean um, for journalists, uh, mm -hmm. so still uh, humans should decide what's important, what might be the exciting issue or right. important issue. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, uh, small details can be automated by machines. Uh, but um, mm. still humans should consider the... Higher quality work, greater value exactly. added work. So the education should be education. Uh, upgraded in, from now. Education so, is a very serious yeah. topic yeah. here, right? Yeah, we are now talking mm -hmm. that AI will be, um, uh, will be complete. Mm -hmm. then, that means that they, uh, AI will not do any mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. in, in the sense, uh, if, if AI can do everything mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. at the level of human, mm -hmm. then we have to worry about uh, the, the human jobs will be missing. Almost mm. all of the human jobs will be replaced by AI machines. Mm. But personally, I think mm -hmm. as humans um, mist do mistake, mm -hmm. AI machines will <coughs> not perfect. Will not be perfect. So there will be human beings needed in the lower level sure. of simple works. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the humans. Uh, um, has to mm -hmm. uh, 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 investigate mm -hmm. or inspect. Ah, inspectors. Yeah, inspect. Yeah. Okay. So one okay. machine mm -hmm. will be. Uh, 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 That's good yeah, idea. Not perfect. Why? Right. And right. 
Yeah. So, manager of the robots, basically. Yes, yes, that's a manager. Yeah. I never heard that. I think that's fascinating, actually, story here. One last concern here, as uh, I know that relates to Dr. Zhang's uh, uh, point. Machine choosing to learn what it wants to learn. And right. by doing so, will we have one day, as we've seen in the movies, mm -hmm. machines, computers that know everything about me? Uh, like we losing mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. own privacy, mm -hmm. not only autonomy of making decisions, but also losing everything about who I am, machine knowing everything about me, when I'm going to die <laughs> based on my genetic information, <coughs> right. and uh, what my emotion is about certain mm -hmm. human beings. Are we going totally naked here in front of machine and machine <coughs> having control all over us? The privacy, what do we do about that? Optimists? I think, yeah, <laughs> I'm optimist. Uh, so please, we need I your think, help. Uh, <coughs> so for example, uh -huh. I think uh, many people, you know, busy people uh, has a secretary, right? Right, right. Secretary actually indeed know a lot more than <laughs> so, okay. yeah, in this case, yeah. so uh, okay. if you're afraid of that situation, mm -hmm. you don't have a secretary. But then I mean, what if the secretary is con connected to other secretaries and, and a part of big uh, <laughs> cloud computing and big data? I think they are already doing it, I guess. They are? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, the... And secretaries talking to one another based on this global, uh, global <laughs> labor union of secretaries. <laughs> but and my, my that point, might be the SNS. Yeah, my, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are already... Th that's yeah, okay. my that's point true. is right there. Actually, I don't use car talks mm. because I'm afraid of my privacy. Right, some people. Yeah, are many doing people that. use car talk, meaning that actually and, and they, are really, they, they, they are releasing their, the you know, the many brand, people right. releasing mm. our lives on on the internet right now. Right, because the car talk is the internet right? and Facebook. Right, and Facebook, and same and thing. Other so. Mm -hmm. I think many people are already doing it. Ah, okay. Okay. So okay. I, in my optimistic, you're not view, doing it. I'm not doing yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So right. we don't really have to worry about that because mm. what's the difference between the, my secretary or my friends mm. know everything about me versus okay. machine know everything about me? Okay. I, I think it's almost the same to mm. me. Actually, mm. I think. Okay. But however, as Professor Zhang said, right. I think uh, educating people is in terms of ethics and something yeah. also mm. uh, you. University I worked in the United States, they had an mm -hmm. uh, area called social informatics. Social uh, informatics. So I okay. think uh, okay. we, as a human, develop mm -hmm. more, you know, kind of uh, deep thought about how technology changes society, how we respond to that change, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's more important. Okay. 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 Uh, well, when we were planning this program, I was concerned whether we will be continuing to talking about this kind of dark and pessimistic side of the future of AIE, but now with surprisingly with thanks uh, with helps from the scientists I think I'm getting more optimistic and even mm -hmm. though we didn't have a philosopher right. or, <laughs> or humanities uh, experts here so we'll have to wrap up our discussion here but uh, you know just like how I feel about the discussion uh, from today's discussion I'm sure mm -hmm. our viewers who have joined us from all around the world also learn a lot about this uh, both positive and negative side of the the, the future of AIE development and perhaps more on the positive side as well. So we want to thank you, all of you who have joined us, our program. And uh, of course, we have to thank our panel members big time for wonderfully sharing your perspective. Mm -hmm. And I tremendously enjoyed today's program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And with thank those you. thanks, we'll come back to you next, uh, next time for sure, uh, this program up front. And that means you will have to also come back to us for this program. Once again, our name up front. Until then, goodbye.